Hey viewers, welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. That's a 2017 Chevrolet. It's a GMC actually, Denali. It's the 1500. And on the dash it says service uh, suspension. So, whatever that means. I let her scan and we're quickly brought into a here's your problem lady situation because, <laughs> first of all, why does a car need this many freaking computers to run down the road? And uh, the other problem is, is right here, the suspension control module. She is lit up gray, which means uh, non-responsive. So, when we take a look at this, it's gonna we're gonna see that we have a no com. So, that's our problem. And by that's our problem, I mean that's our problem in the sense that we can't even talk to the suspension control module wherever it is and whatever it does uh, is to be determined. So we need to figure out where this thing lives. It's a vehicle I'm pretty unfamiliar with. Uh, but we'll look up, we'll get a component locator, we'll see where this module is and we'll handle it just like we do anything else. Does it have power? Does it have grounds? Does it have the ability to communicate? Which I assume it probably does because it shows it here on two data networks. So it shows it on um the high speed controller network so along with the looks like a power steering control module the electronic brake control module the steering angle sensor and then the suspension control module then it also shows it on ccan which is the purple data network here which is pins 12 and 13 at the data link connector and if i remember correctly on the general motors that is also i think commonly referred to as the chassis expansion bus so I don't think we're probably dealing with a broken network wire or you know a module that's pulled down killing the whole network because it's only one thing it's not jibber jabbering on there according to the internet looking like this is the rear of the vehicle that's the right rear tire and it looks like it's on the right side and this is the donger that you stick your rod into to let the uh, spare tire down so very similar location as the fuel pump control module on a lot of these shivvies that we do that sit back here and have a tendency rot out, get full of water. So maybe the same thing. Uh, I think while we're right here, we'll try to find a uh, wiring diagram on this little fella so we know what to check for when we get back there. Or perhaps we can start out our day with a classic visual inspection. Hello, hello. Huh? Hi, Luna. Hi, Pokey Kiki. Hi. How you doing? Uh. Wiring diagram is obtained. It seems like a pretty simple one. There's the truck. <laughs> farm truck. Diesel fuel tank in the back. Denali. Pretty fancy farm truck, huh? Let's throw the battery charger on this little fella before we get it up in the air. Just because with the key on, it's got the OG battery in it, so it's probably not going to last a long time. Uh, key on engine off and I don't know what we're gonna find when we're in there as far as how long we need to leave the key on I mean we could lift it up and be done in five minutes or we could be down there for an hour who knows being careful not to ruin the element of surprise we will walk back here together and that must be it so that's the module and we got a zip tie oh boy we got some other modules here, probably trailer brake and fuel pump control module would be my guess. Here's your typical New York rot box. I do see some zip ties. We see some fresh tape. Oh boy. What do we got up here? Let me tip this down so I can see. What can you guys see? Oh baby. This ain't this girl's first rodeo, let me tell you what. No matter what she tells you, she's lying. So, let's just give it a touch here. Set my light down. Doesn't feel smoldering hot. Feels a little crusty on top though. Let's go get a mirror. Stick this right here. On something that's magnetic. We'll go up here and get us a mirror. There's our diagram. Get this little fella. Before we start fiddling. Let's have a look up top. Oh, she's dirty. Yep, so she looks pretty crusty up there. Don't see any green pus coming out of it. But you know what we got to do next? Because she's been taped. A lot of sin under that black tape, I bet. Um, 
what we should have done is seen where the fuse was first and check the fuse but we're right here so we'll just make some quick checks which is completely backwards of how you should do it because technically we should have looked before we picked it up that would have been the proper way let's just take it we know it doesn't communicate let's see do we got any pin numbers maybe on the back here Yes we do, yes sir. Okay, so can you guys see the connector here? There's numbers on the back. We've got our diagram and our ground is number 47 here. And the power is 32, 47 and 32. 47 is this big sucker right here and 32 is a big red sucker up there. So, we have power and ground. We've got a big test light 4 amper very gingerly front row with it and we have no light and like my wife this fuse is supposed to be hot at all times so are we missing the ground or are we missing the power so let's just keep it in the power side so keep it in 32 let's stick it on a crusty frame If I go up there and that stinking fuse is blown, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> well, we still gotta figure out why, but anyhow, yeah, so it appears we have no power here. I don't know if we have a ground because we have no other power source, I don't think, run into this little fella. That it looks like. No, sir. All right, let's let it down and check fuse. What an idiot this guy is. Because now we need to know. Uh, E S C E L H E X H fuse. Electronic suspension, exhaust, something else. Electronic leveling or something. 30 amp fuse, underhood fuse box, left side of the engine. Let's go. No, oh, Erico, you disappoint me. Go ahead and say it, folks. I believe it. Sometimes we preach it, we just don't do it. Uh, so, what the process should have been is to do as much as you can from the driver's seat, you know. With the data that you have make your assessments and then um, you know if you determine it's a circuit code you know do we have power here and then you know you just try to save yourself time from raising it up and down a lip but we didn't we failed I failed you I'm not saying this fuse is going to be blown but we need to know if we have power here or not so number 20 ESC ELC and EXH number 20 which is Figure out the diagrams here, number 20. Boo boo boo, boom. One, two, three, four. Is this? Sometimes these are confusing as to which direction they run here. Um, I'm in there, we go. So there's that. 18, 19, 20. Shows it as a 10 amp. Number 20. Oh, I see, because it's not showing the blanks. Oh. So 18, 19, so it's this 30 amper right there. Stand by, I did bring a test light. We'll hold that test light right there. Does this 30 amper have power on both sides? And it does, so we got power. Oh, can you guys, oh, you're not even in frame. What an idiot, this guy sucks. Try this all over again. Everything I just said, blah, blah, blah. We're here at the 30 amper, number 20, which is this guy right here. And we have power on that side. Of course you can't see because I got the big light in the way. We have power on that side. We have power on this side. The fuse box looks nice and clean in here. About this fuse. Yep, so I'm a thinking that under that big mess of tape back there, we're gonna find the answer to this little guy. Now you gotta ask yourself if I was a broken wire. Where would I be? Well, somewhere's in the harvest. That's the answer to that question. So, I say, we see all the sin right here. Well, I gotta talk to this fella. Just stand by, folks. Okay, this is a factory zip tie. That one's cut. Let's just have a, we'll do some exploratory exploring. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Boy, she's taped up a long ways here, fellas. But I'm assuming that we have a lot of 
Well, what color wire was this? Red, there's probably a lot of them in that harness. Right side up. Uh, number 20 something or other there. Number 32, red with light green is the wire that we're looking for. And then there's some sin right there all wadded up. Red with light green. So we don't know. Tell you what, let's just look here close to our connector. This is not this is not factory right here. We're gonna take and pop that. Just kind of tip that back, make sure it's not right immediately right here. And then I feel a bunch of stuff wadded up right here. Makes me wonder. Oh, there's so much here that makes me wonder. Um, got some zip ties here. She comes around town. Gosh dang it, where are you broke, old girl? I want to open it up in only one spot. And that has a harness that goes that way to something else. We can't really pull this down and around. I'm wondering. I wonder what else runs off that fuse if we're able to use the old fox and hound routine. Uh, typically not a big fan of that because most circuits go every which way. Uh, we do have a big open harness right here. So that's interesting. There's no tape on that whatsoever. So I'm going to stick my face under there. Let me stick a mirror up there to see if we see any green pus. You should dirty. I don't see any green pus. It is a fully exposed harness, no tape, no nothing. Um, just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Looking at the diagram, this fuse, looking at power distribution. So we have power comes into it. Uh, and then it goes down and only goes to the suspension control module. So that's good. It doesn't branch off to a bunch of different circuits. So what we're going to attempt to do is use a tool I bought about 15 years ago and I've never once used it. Uh, the ECT 2000, uh, diagnose shorts and open like a pro. Uh, I'm not usually a big fan of these, but we're going to give it the old college try. I believe we hook this up, battery and ground. It's going to inject a signal that is detectable by this receiver that we run along the harness. Now, I don't know if the batteries are probably dead in it. Oh no, look at that, it turns on. I don't know what that means. We'll fiddle with it. Um, we might better, the batteries in it are from, or good up till 2016. So that's how long ago, and they were probably worth it, uh, you know, probably 2010 or so at that point. So anyhow, we'll go put some new batteries in it. Um, I don't know how to use it, but we're gonna figure it out. Real fine time to be learning something, huh? We could find it the old fashioned way, but. Everybody's always complaining in my videos because we don't use a fox and hound setup. So let's see, it's this fuse here. So we're gonna need to pull that fuse out and find the non-powered side of it, first of all. Does that make sense to you? So we'll pull this one out. Hopefully we're on the right little circuit here. We should be. And then we wanna find which leg is powered. Okay, so it's this one. So we want to go on the non-powered side of it. Uh, let's take it, I'm going to plug this thing in here to the battery. Okay, so we've got this plugged into the battery. Oh, we don't want that thing beeping. And then we're going to use, I assume, something like this that we can just shove in the fuse box. Okay, and currently this says open circuited on it, on the little indicator here. I don't know if I short it, if it'll say. Okay, so it says short grounded. Uh, I'm thinking this transmitter here. Yep, so as it comes down this wire. Oops, and then once we get past, we, it should send a signal. Okay, so that makes sense. 
and then if it was shorted to ground. Okay, so it makes a different sound. Okay, so anyhow, I think we got the gist of how it works. Um, I'm gonna get something different to go in there. I think, I, think we, I think we know enough about it that we can just get after it here, boys. Stick this in here. This has got your classic banana jack. Stick that in there. So, if we take our little receiver, which turned off. We can see that, you know, this wire is traceable now. Okay, so it's traceable. So we should be able to go under there and trace it through whatever harness it runs out of heading back there. We should be able to find it somewhere. And then hopefully once we get past where it's open, this thing should quit beeping is what I'm thinking. But my experience with these in the automotive world is that the entire harness turns into this giant antenna and these things don't work that well. But, you know, I don't know. Let's go try it out, who cares? Let's quit talking. Is it broke like right here? Point the thunder. See this? I think. I need to see something here. So we're gonna go right in the end of that wire. Does this thing become the antenna now? No, I think all the other wires in here are becoming the antenna though. That's why these things never work. Alright, let's. I better make damn sure that we're missing power back here. Wow, the fuse is out. I can't, you know, I can't even check that now. Um, okay, we're getting a faster rate of beeping, so. No, maybe not. play with us here a minute. So this is the harness that runs to the back here and it tells you to use open short pickup. So we're looking for an open which is right here on the side of the tool. Wiring harness probe I guess must be you can just shove it in the harness and find it but it definitely should be Should be beeping along here for an opener or a short, which it is. Oh man, somebody's been through here before. Look at this thing, she's all opened up. Which this is kind of nonsense because it was beeping in the back. some more harness. That's weird, it's not beeping along that harness. It's not beeping along there, but it's just beeping in the back. So it's beeping right here. So we're detecting it right here by the spring shackle. Oops. Changes the 
it, sent, it locks in the sensitivity level. Okay. Now you skip right past that. And like I say, you come to the back here and it still is detecting the signal. I don't know, I'd probably have to watch the directions on it. Whatever, dude, let's just fix it the old fashioned way. You see where that's open right there? Somebody's been all up under here too. Oh, <laughs> well, there's your problem, lady. You got some green crusties right there. Am I right? Gosh, take them fancy tools and tell them what. You just gotta look to see where somebody's been in most cases, which unfortunately they've been all over this truck for some reason. Well, if that's not the problem, it's a problem anyways. Lucky, lucky. Lucky, lucky what I see, lady. Now before you even say it, I know everybody in the comment section who has worked for the phone company is going to rip me apart for not using the tool correctly or something. But, and please don't send me a whole bunch of fox and hound tools in the mail. I do appreciate it, but um, I'll be honest with you, I can find broken wires usually 10 times faster. I have at one point way back in the day, back when I first bought that tool, when I thought it would be helpful, I do remember watching the videos and reading the directions on it. Let me go get a tool here. And then saying, wow, this will be awesome. This will be fun. And then I remember trying it and uh, using it only to discover that the entire wiring harness turns into an antenna, virtually making the tool worthless unless you can keep the tool a certain amount of inches away from the harness exactly so you can regulate the type of signal that it's picking up and basically it was just ridiculous to use uh, in the end it just just didn't really pan out in an automotive type setting now i know there are literally hundreds and thousands of you that will comment that you do this every day and it works for you and that's great but honestly it's just never worked for me I'm kind of old-fashioned. We'll break the system down the old-fashioned way to keep us from going on wild goose chases. Clearly this is because somebody has been here. Look at this. She's been all knifed open. Oh. Boy, you could really open Pandora's box. This thing has been slit front to rear. And I'm coming in. This ain't good, fellas. Not good at all. I don't know why or who was in here or what they were looking for. Yikes. And yes, I know sewing seam rippers are your preferred harness opening tool because it prevents things like this. But I'm being careful, folks, rest assured. And again, we don't even know if this is the wire we're after. Oh my goodness, there's more green up in here. So I'm gonna open this up a little bit more because we need to see who else is broken. Let's see, here is the money shot. Let's go get in close for that. Better enhance, 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 unenhance. So I'll give you the money shot on this one. Boom, there she is. There's that money shot. What else? We need to make sure that this green up here is not green on the account that the wires are broke, but just on the account that it's just extra residual dust from this little fella. Oh my goodness, that wire is nicked and broke right there. This wire is also nicked. Holy moly crap holy. We don't even know what that purple wire goes to. Cat's out of the bag now, baby. So that's way up under here somewhere. Son of a biscuit, I wish I didn't even open this up. Oh, unenhance. Got this wire right here. Dude, this truck is basically totaled in my opinion, 
because if this thing's like this front to rear, this is going to be a continual problem year after year because who knows how many times this harness is nicked up through there. I think this is the second video on a Chevrolet uh, that would have been bought at our local dealer that would have been warrantied through our local dealer at some point that came in with this entire side harness ripped to shreds. You remember that video we did? It was, uh, they had a missing five volt reference or something at the uh, fuel pump control module. I mean, this wire has been poked here. It's broke right here. This wire has been cut right here and right here and it's broke down there. There's another wire right here that the insulation is nicked on that needs to be repaired. Somebody just got in here with a knife and just started waving it around. Like, hey, come and do my knife party. I've never even been to a knife party. I know this Tessa tape is a son of a mother to cut through, but you gotta calm down, my guy. So we're gonna just bring our way up through here. No, I'm not nicking the wires. Settle down. Just getting through that. Yep, there's the other wire that broke. I just want to be able to get to everything. This would be the one case in which the dealership would say your car, you know, needs a harness, AKA we don't know what's wrong with it. And then they would actually be right and it would probably be better off than it was. So there's this wire, which I think is that purple wire that we just broke. Yeah, so purple and green. We need to fix it. Oh, here's another wire that's slit right there. This wire right here is cut. Oh, that's a network wire. Boom, that one's broke. Yeah, that's a data network wire right there. So that one's broke, that one's broke. This one needs to be broke because that one's cut through. It's cut down just to the insulation right there. So we have one, two, three broken ones. That one needs to be cut back further. And then we have a few here that, oh, wait a minute, is this another broken one? No, nope, that was just green turds on there. Holy smokies. It should be fixed now, because I think that one's cut through. So there's those two, I should grab us a zip tie. Looks like I'm talking to somebody who's actually gonna go get me a zip tie. I'm thinking just those two. Aye, aye, aye. Who's over there? Anybody? Nope. I'm thinking that's it, folks. Uh, let's do the wiring repair on one, two, three that are broken, and then uh, four and five, which are about to be broken at some point in their life. I'm gonna open this up a little bit more and do what we gotta do. I don't know if this is factory here, if somebody's been already been up in this joint and fixed this wire. This truck's a freaking mess, my guy. What's wrong with this thing? Oh, broken wire. And you already found it? Yes, Mrs. Lowe. <laughs> I just we walk around always impressed. You do? Yeah. I impress you that much? Well. <coughs> well, well, what else would I be? Oh, I don't know. Maybe someday I'll disappoint you. You don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointing the people right now. Oh, they can't even see you, old girl. This thing's just kind of shining in outer space over here. Let me move it around. I thought they come here to see you. No, they come here to watch me in hopes of seeing you, I think. This is not what they want to see. They want to see what you're doing. They don't want to see this because I'm doing, I'm carrying out one of the most controversial topics oh, on the planet. That's what people like though. They want to see that, right? No. I try not to piss people off. And if you want to piss people off. You walk around trying not to piss people off. On YouTube. Hmm. Some, mm -hmm. some days, so you know me. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, hey, it's my favorite part of the day. And the pissing people off part. <laughs> That's from the dog snowplowing video. You remember the dog, right? The 
You, you seen the video? Oh yeah. Show you how the dog does it. You know, my favorite video. Mm -hmm. And yeah, let's show the people what we're doing there here. Well, let's piss everybody off right here. You ready, folks? I've mechanically twisted the wires. And now I'm going to solder and heat shrink them. This is perhaps one of the most controversial topics in the words of David Attenborough on the planet. <laughs> because all of the armchair experts out there will tell you that you need to have a mechanical crimp connection then the other armchair experts will tell you that you need to solder it then the other ones tell you to use a wire nut and at the end of the day nobody knows what to do however this is what i'm electing to do your classic solder and heat shrink what does they say across the pond solder because for some reason it has an l in it and i'm just adding lengths of wire to the ones that we've cut yeah, does it look great? No. Are we replacing the harness? No. Is it gonna work? You betcha, buddy. So, we're doing that. We're gonna make the old mechanical connection out of it here. And then we're gonna slip over a piece of solder and heat shrink in a tube. And we're gonna heat it. We're gonna let it bond and everybody's gonna go home happy. And at the end of the day, I'm thinking that at some point, this truck is gonna come back and visit us here at SMA. Anywho, because I'm sure this is not the only sin that's hiding beneath all of this tape front to rear. Am I gonna go expose it all and look for everything? Nope. I'm gonna fix his suspension light and then I'm gonna ship it. Hey, now we can talk to it. So things are probably going to have lots of codes in them, other modules other than our initial scan. So what I'm going to do is just do a, um, a full system fault scan, go through and clear all the codes, uh, just because we opened up some circuits with the key on and everything's going to be a little upset with us, I'm sure. I'll leave it up to the customer what he wants to do. I'll give him my recommendation, but truth be told I mean it's a 2017 it's a farm truck they don't live to see 10 years old more than we had already 17 18, 20 five year old truck so another four or five years this thing's gonna be down at Wilbur you pull the bath not a sponsor but maybe someday we'll in the future we'll go down and yank some parts off it as long as it's not this wiring harness we should be okay take and get this all wrapped up I believe that we got all the wires I got I got those other two that just had the abrasion on them that were just poked through everything else has been soldered and heat shrinked and those have been crimped and heat shrinked because we essentially just cut them and stripped them back and put them back together so we'll get it taped up all fancy but yeah it really is too bad this was probably a $50,000 truck when it was new or more, I don't know. I don't keep track of truck prices, but I'm sure it wasn't cheap with all the options here. It's got the leather, the hole in the roof, the chubby rubber. And unfortunately, it's been hacked to pieces. Probably at the dealer would be my assumption. But you never know. So she's all put back how we found it. Boy, it's pretty unfortunate to know that there is a lot more sin hiding under these wires than what, or under this wire loom than what we can see because she has been touched on every square inch of that tube. Yay, yay, yay. So we'll put this thing away again for another 10 or 15 years. Might revisit it or at least steal some of the probes out of it there. Just never, uh, never had good luck with this stuff here, folks. So we're gonna have to continue doing it the way we've been doing it for the past 20 plus years, using our peepers and uh, logic. There, let's go start it up. We should be golden now. Lawnmower man's out there. We made it a whole video. Oh, shit, it's under. 
let's see, it was popping right up here in the middle before. Mm. There's the gauges. She's a little slow. And it would pop right up in the middle where it says hood open. We're going to dismiss that. And there, so uh, no more suspension light. Who remembers the day when a gauge was a gauge, not just a screen? She's clean and green now, folks. Uh, at least for the time being. And yeah, back when cars had gauges, that was called the good old days. But that time's long gone. It's only going to get worse. Remember, this is an old truck here. And uh, the newer they get, the more crap they put in them. And uh, we just got to, you know, more wires, more modules, more stuff. Um, it's all, most of it's like infotainment, creature comfort type crap, but it gets expensive in the end. So uh, that's it. That's the end of this show. It was an easy fix, easy find. Definitely, you know, probably not a normal issue, but obviously was results of somebody's monkey business through this whole harness. And I even see evidence here under the hood where everything has been zip tied and taped all the way across uh, to the passenger side valve cover. You can see this thing's a mess. Uh, if I was this guy, I'd can this truck. I would ditch it. 86 this thing. It's out of here. Uh, this is going to be nothing but problems. Um, and unfortunately, this is probably years after somebody was already in there. You know, somebody didn't just cut this open last year. You get in there, you start knifing, jamming, poking. It takes a year or two for all your uh, sin to be dragged out to the light. But uh, that's it. Moving on. You'll move on to that comment section. The questions, the comments, the concerns you have, the Insty, the Facebook. Y'all know what to do. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.